really played a part in my introduction to the streets. Um, the shit we call game banging, cripping, also um, recording as an artist, life in general. Um, he was slightly older than me in the environment that we both came from, the challenges that you know can Man. you can face in those um, environments he faced before me. Just if you want to keep it a Google, if you're doing it on a scale, he had a very much further, harder upbringing than I had in the same environment. And we were united by a mutual uh, loved one long, long ago. Yes. We've been thugging ever since. He had a lot of the same gifts and blessings and aspirations that I have when it comes to being a public speaker, orator, rapper, recording artist, also a street um, legend, one of the most original Compton Crips that I've been affiliated with. I want to introduce my brother, my cousin, uh, formerly known as 3D, <laughs> uh, now known as Suicide, um, to the podcast, Facts with Phyllis. Family. Pleasure, bro. Family. Pleasure, bro. <laughs> Where has been some years? Yes, yeah, humbly, the way people say see you at the top, I don't want to announce that we're at the top of anything, but beginning where we started from, and you know how imagine people say, see you at the top. I just want to say, welcome to the top, being here, you Man, know what I'm saying? We've been through a lot, bro. Um, For real. Um, it's history right here. History. I want to let you know I typically do a lot of preparation and get like current events and I try to study my um, guests and think what would be the most pertinent things to uh, discuss. Yeah. I run it by production. They yes. give me their thoughts and we go through a whole 48 hours of back and forth. It's a three member team that goes for it. Two males and a female. Shout out to the production team. Shout out. For real. This time that they, they, when they tried to go through their process a few days ago they asked me like, what's on the menu? I just told them, don't worry about it. We gonna freestyle. Yeah, this different. Yes, it's very organic, very different. Um, <laughs> unscripted. <laughs> unscripted. I have no idea where it's gonna go. I know we have too much to talk about that wouldn't to overdo the hour that we try to capture. So that's not a problem. I'm gonna try to start this conversation from a place, just from a um, general perspective. I'm gonna allow you to give, uh, give yourself an opportunity to tell your testimony because I know that um, the majority of what I've known of your life is the second half of it. You've had two lives in this one life where most two people birthdays. only get one life. You have two birthdays. And I don't want to be the one to uh, try to explain and describe how or why that is. I want to take you first to where I can recall my most foggiest members of begin member memories of our, of our beginnings and where you were in your existence. And then you can do what you choose to explain about how you Went from 3D to suicide. Let's get it. All right, so I'm gonna just throw a few names around. Shout out to DJ Loom, my cousin Liam. Yeah, my brother from yes, another mother, you, man. bro. Uh, yes, Samuel can't, spell can't, backwards. Can't, can't forget Kurt either, man. Kurt either on God. <laughs> on my, and, and you can't. And, come on. No, uh, uh, it was John brother. John brother, Trey. Can't yeah. forget Trey. 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 Can't forget Trey. The Beanie Boys. They yeah. used to keep the beanies. Yeah. Used to clown the beanies. Oh, God. <laughs> so I want to say uh, Eve Jim, Leon Haywood, yes. Crenshaw and Rodeo in the yes. back in the alley. Yes. Uh, before, I know, uh, I'm going to just say this to the world. I said it before. Before that, that was a part of our um, history. It is. And I can remember that as my first remembrance of your, your professional recording situation. But the reason I was exposed to that is because prior to that, a lot of people know, I grew up in Compton in the track new area, which is walking minutes from your native yep. neighborhood of the Lantanas. And because of my cousin DJ Loom, Lee Amis, I, um, as a youngster, used to go across the lines with him, and you was one of his partners. And then I became familiar with you to the point where the way my mama tried to raise me so isolated, you was one of the only niggas I knew that was a street nigga, crip nigga that Come understood over there by yourself. By myself. <laughs> you on that bike, I remember we used to have a used to have a pound, the pit bulls, <laughs> just the, the pig iron. It was everything speed back there, speed back, everything. Cause it was like a, it was it was one it was it was really one of my first very up close introductions to what it really is to be out here, and then you know me being a poet or whatever. We had the same gifts, and then you went through some traumatic experiences in your life where you felt like you were um, hopeless. Yes, life familyless, homeless. Please bring us into your experience because I know you're a motivational speaker now. Oh, you yeah. traveled the world. Oh yeah, Japan and beyond. Break us. <clears throat> <introduce yourself. throat> smoke with you. I'm gonna smoke with you for sure. We 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 gonna get, we gonna get it. Well, one of the first niggas I was smoking weed with too <laughs> on the set. For Go real. Ahead. <laughs> for real. Um, man, you know, when I was, uh, you know, kicked out the house, uh, the adoption home that I grew up in at 16, it's like, 
I had no other place to go but the streets, but the neighborhood, you know, the, that that was the family that I had and shit. And it got to the point to where I feel like it, it, things wasn't adding up for me in life. Mm. You know, it just wasn't adding up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hustling. I'm doing everything possible to try to stay afloat, to try to stay ahead. But when it came to that, having that family structure, family love, because Miss Price had got sick. Mm. So her daughters took over her house and they asked me to leave because I was bringing drama to the house. But Miss Price had been responsible for raising you yeah, up into uh, your teenagers. From 18 months. Okay, yeah. was, was that uh, from your bloodline or was that like an adoption situation? Adopted situation okay. for me being abandoned by my real parents from, and found in my apartment. Young. I was 18 months. Oh, so all you knew was Miss Price. That's like natural yeah, blood. Yeah. Okay, That's okay. All I knew was Miss Price. Because her, yeah, her home was at, yeah, in 92. Her home was a temporary age, foster though. home. What age? Was I? Yeah. I was like um, 21. She okay. came. Tweety brought her to see me in the hospital when I shot myself in the head. Okay. Um, I feel like. At that point, I was um, getting maybe 22. Life just wasn't working out. Sleeping in the car, I'm sleeping on the homies' floors. I'm for wherever what, I can. For how much? For, like, okay, so just between the ages of 21, and 22, it was that bad? So it was like a so a 12 16, month period. Oh no, from like 16 years of age to like to, 22. To I was like 21. So like oh, like five years. Yeah, yeah five years of just trying your best, just couldn't breathe right in life. Just couldn't breathe right in life. I, I just couldn't figure it out. It, it just I couldn't pinpoint it. You know, typically when you hear people that have made us. A, a, attempt and weren't successful you hear about people who took pills who weren't that potent or maybe uh sliced their wrist and it wasn't that uh bro um i know god bless i'm so glad that i can say this you took a, a, a active firearm and you have a scar that, right here that, that goes across your temple this, right here. this is x marks the spot thing. yeah this is what we talk it's my birthmark yeah a, a second birthmark mm -hmm. on a spiritual sense I know how you dedicated your life, even though you didn't turn into an angel immediately. Yes. You still stayed on the and, and and in a deep sense, it's like to be applauded. Because a lot of people have near death experiences and then on the opposite side, they immediately act like, Oh, I'm holy and I'm you didn't necessarily do that. I, I came out the hospital with a big bandage around my head and it was back to the same, same life. Nigga. Nothing changed, same nigga. And I just got a bandage on my head. Still doing the same shit, still in these trenches, still ready for whatever. And it, it, What was it about the emotions that led you to that decision and then surviving such a tragic experience that you inflicted upon yourself that caused you, it's been 30 plus years, yes. to be such a, you know, all my, like one of my motherfucking being attracted to our lifestyle that we dedicate yes. ourselves to at one yes. point and your testimony, you know how dangerous the lifestyle is in general. And then being able to balance a uh, communication and with you understanding that if you don't know what this nigga up to, that was kind of like the same thrill that attracted me to the streets in general. But what is it? Cause you always assured me in more ways than one that there was no harm. There was no reason to be fearful of you. Even yeah. though I saw you still maintain the same command in your environment, you never turned down what you was, but I never felt like I was threatened, even though I knew exactly what you had experienced. What is it about life before the incident yeah. and after that caused you to be such a balanced individual? Well, technically the beef wasn't with nobody. It was with me. Mm. You know, I had personal beef within myself and, and, the last time I had seen Miss Price, you know, she had Alzheimer's, and I'm standing there talking to her, and she, don't know you. she didn't know me. <sighs> and this is somebody that that's I couldn't do no wrong in her eyes. Mm. Th this is who I talked to, whether I did right or wrong. This is who I know I could come talk to, and she, she had, you know, put her arms around me. And was there was for a me. portion of you that thought that doing this would cause you to be able to be back reunited with that? You be now I'm with I'm with her. I mean, I feel like. See, I feel like when she was brung to the hospital, they didn't tell her what happened. They told her somebody tried to rob me mm. and shot me in the head. Mm. But I remember looking up, man, waking up, and I looked up, and Miss Price was standing over me. And I, you know, I leaned up, and she put her arms around me, and, and we cried together. 